What's up, peeps? We're going to do something a little different this week. If you remember, last week we briefly mentioned large igneous provinces. Well, today we're going to go look at one. And not just any one. The largest large igneous province in the world. But first, I got to go pick up a friend. today by uh, a friend of mine, Jake, and Jake is a PhD candidate at Rutgers University in New Jersey, and more importantly, he's a petrologist. Geochemist. Okay, fine. He's a geochemist. And we're on our way to the Palisades, and the Palisades are part of a large igneous province. So Jake, what is a large igneous province? Now, uh, a large igneous province is a large volume of igneous rocks um, that came from a, a volcano. Sometimes they're intrusive, sometimes they're extrusive. Usually they contain both types of rocks. But the idea is it's just a really large volume um, of igneous rocks that get erupted onto the surface of the Earth um, all, all in one short period of time, like over a couple millions of years. A couple million years is a long time to us, but in geologic time, that's like a snapshot. Correct. Yeah. And so this particular large igneous province is one of, if not the largest in the world, and it's called CAMP, which stands for the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. And if you looked at a map of CAMP, you would see that it's in the east coast of North America and in Brazil and in western France on the Iberian Peninsula which is now like Spain and Portugal and in West Africa which when Pangea was still a thing we're all actually kind of hanging out in the same spot in this big supercontinent called Pangea. So Jake what kind of causes um, or what's one way to cause a lip and tie that to the breakup of Pangea? Uh, so there's things called mantle plumes. So the earth is made up of layers. We have the core at the very center, um, then there's the outer core, then the mantle, and then we're sitting on top of the crust. Um, but where the core interacts with the mantle, sometimes you can get really hot areas um, that bring really hot molten magma to the surface of the earth from the core. Those are called mantle plumes. Now if you have a supercontinent, when Pangea was all together, Consider that like a blanket. Um, and underneath that blanket, it gets really, really hot. And it makes it easier for one of these mantle plumes um, to push through the surface and break up that supercontinent. Yeah. Another so, thing is, I'll, I'll mention also with lips, they're often associated with mass extinctions. So yeah. this planet has had five mass extinctions that we know of. Um, and camp, at around 200 million years ago, happens to be associated with one of these five major mass extinctions. Right. So basically, 200, around 200 million years ago, um, Pangea starts to break up, and North America and South America and Africa and Europe all start heading off in you know their respective different directions. And around that same time, as this continent starts to rift apart, we get large volumes of igneous rocks spilling out onto the surface of all of the margins of those new continents. Is that basically it? Sounds about, sounds good to me. <laughs> Jake, so here we are in the shadow of the George Washington Bridge, and we are at the contact of the Palisade Sill, which is part of the Central Atlantic 
Magmatic Province. And this is where uh, camp basically was deposited on top of these, what were sedimentary rocks. Correct. So, <laughs> he nailed it. Uh, so you can see horizontal layering here on the bottom. That was the original sedimentary rock, which is now a metamorphic rock because it was heated up. Um, and then on top of it here, this is this is the Palisades cell. So this is the igneous rocks, um, which is super fine grained. So we actually can't see any minerals inside of this rock without a hand lens or a microscope. And that's because it cooled off really, really fast um, against this really cold sedimentary rock when it was deposited um, around two million years ago. the bottom of the sill and throughout the day we're going to work our way up towards the center where we'll get bigger grain sizes because the center of a, of a lava flow or a magma chamber is going to cool a lot slower because it's hotter. So uh, yeah, this is where it all started. Good day, bad day. It's actually all a bad day. <laughs> here at uh, the Palisades Sill. So um, this is the Fort Lee State Park. Um, and earlier we were that direction. We were at the bottom of the intrusion where you saw the contact between the igneous rock and the formerly sedimentary rock. Now we've walked up um, through the intrusion. So we're moving towards the center where the cooling took place a lot slower and we can finally start to see some coarser grain sizes. That means the grains are bigger and we can start to see the minerals within the rock. Um, that's all we can see actually in this one location. Um, sorry, we got helicopters above. They're looking at the traffic of the George Washington, which is always horrible. Um, but anyway, so we're now as far towards the center as we can get at this one location um, on the Palisade Sill. So we're going to end here, but just as a reminder, the Palisade Sill is just one small portion, one small intrusive portion of camp, uh, which is the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. Uh, which is also one of the largest lips in the world. So remember, large igneous provinces are massive outpourings of igneous rocks. Some of them are extrusive, some of them are intrusive. Sometimes they can cause mass extinctions, like Camp did. And sometimes they can cause changes in climate. Well, uh, ask questions in the comments below. As always... He can't remember what he's going to say. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching, peeps. See you next week. We're gonna, that's it. That's all we got.